everybody, it's David and Brian with VM Blog, and we're here live in Nashville, Tennessee at the iGel Disrupt event. We're here at the Gaylord Opulent uh, Resort, and we'll be doing live video coverage of the event and talking with some of the iGel partners in the end user computing space. Make sure to check out our videos at the events.vmblog.com page. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee at the iGel Disrupt 2020 event, and I'm here with Jeff from Lakeside. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Lakeside and how you fit into the EUC market? Yeah, so Lakeside Software is a digital experience monitoring solution. It's all about the end user, being able to understand what's happening on that end user device, what is their end user experience, uh, being able to do root cause and really understand the problems that the user is having, um, which is critical to understand and have that visibility for things that you're looking to do, whether it be WVD, VDI, hardware refreshes, software rationalization. It's really understanding everything and anything that happens with the user and how they feel about their device and their digital workspace. And how do you work together with iGel? What's your partnership? So we've partnered with iGel well, several years now. Um, and the big one is, is we have visibility to the endpoint. So when you use an iGel device, we're baked directly into their operating system. So we'll get telemetry from that endpoint device, whether they're repurposing a five-year-old PC, it's a thin client, whatever it may be. We will actually get the telemetry from the endpoint device and understand is the issue with the endpoint. Um, very powerful for like remote users or home users. Sure. They're at home, they're doing we don't know what right. on their devices. And then they'll start and say, well, it's slow, and we're trying to troubleshoot what's happening on yeah, the network. Why is it slow? And it has nothing to do with it, and a lot of times it could be that endpoint device. Um, it could be a CPU issue, it could be latency issues on their home network. We'll get to all that telemetry right inside of the remote channels. That's great. And I understand you have a demo with you that we could take a look at? Yeah, so what I wanted to show is more around the AI ops aspect of things. And we've expanded AI ops quite a bit um, in 9.0. Um, it's, it's a lot of sensor driven, a lot of intelligence that's been put into the product to help understand root cause a little bit faster and then how do I fix it? Okay. So what are we looking at? So what we're looking at here is our AI ops screen. Um, these, this is being driven from sensors. So we're constantly monitoring 10,000 different data points every 15 seconds. We're always doing diagnostics on the system. So we understand when there's an issue, there's problems, there's things that are happening. These are out-of-the-box sensors, so you don't have to go out there and try to figure out what it is that I need to be looking for, what should I be monitoring, um, what threshold should I be setting. We do all of it 100% out-of-the-box. So when something breaks, or something starts to break, AI ops will pick that up. We'll start seeing the sensors that are tripped on the endpoint devices. Then we start being able to understand scale. How big of a problem is it? Is it happening on one or two systems? Is it happening on a thousand systems? From there, we can start diagnosing by department, by group, by location. Is it only happening on Win 10 devices? Is it only happening on Win 7? Is it only happening in WVD? Where is the problem? Again, directing the IT effort. When I'm looking at the different sensors, I also have the ability to drill in and being able to see what systems are being impacted. So I can double click and say, all right, well, this sensor is being tripped. What systems are impacted? Moreover, it gives me the ability to look and being able to understand, is it a new problem or is it an existing problem? If it's a new problem, what changed? What happened? What caused it? If it's existing, okay. It's bubbling up, it's getting more and more, it's impacting more and more users, we have to address it. Any sensor that we trip on, we can actually do automation on as well too. So remediate it. Don't have to wait for the users to call and complain. We're there, we're monitoring it, we can see the issue, we have a solution for it, just automatically fix it. A lot of admins though, they don't really want to release that control. So we do have the ability to allow them to do a mass healing right from inside of AI ops as well too. So again, same kind of concept. You get your toolbox of your scripts and things that you do use to fix the problem, but I want to see it, I want to make sure that it's working before I just automatically do it. So with that, you have the ability to do mass healing as well, right from inside AI ops. You're able to start looking at geolocation. Where are these systems located? 
Is it primarily coming from one part of the country or um, one branch or location? We'll give you that visibility. The other important part of this is looking at the sensor patterns. So as we start fixing things and we start changing things, is it working? Is it fixing things? And then being able to trend that as well. Are things getting better? So what we're seeing on the screen is the fact that there are things that are getting worse. New, new sensors are being tripped. So the changes that we're making aren't necessarily fixing the issues or the problems in the environment. This is having a negative impact on the end users. Taking that one step further, as I make those changes, I need to do correlation with sensors. So when I make a change, did I just break something? Or did I fix it? Right. So being able to understand, is this a newly activated sensor, yes or no? Have we seen this before the change? If we've seen it before the change, obviously the change didn't cause the problem. If we make this change and all of a sudden now I've got all these sensors that are tripping, wait a minute, I just broke something. This is my problem, this is my root cause. So you're not having to try to go out there and figure out what has changed, we see all the changes. Again, going back to the 10,000 different data collection. We see everything that happens, we understand this change happened, and it had this impact on the end users. And that's AI ops, and this has been drastically expanded in version nine. Great, and where can our viewers go if they want to find out more information about AI ops and, uh, and the company itself? Lakesidesoftware.com is, is a great starting point. Uh, we do have the ability to do free assessments, so if you're looking at WVD, um, obviously again, we've partnered with iGel, iGel and WVD together, are they a right fit for you? You can do a 60-day free assessment by going to wvd.lakesidesoftware.com, register for a free assessment, identify, is it right for you? How can I make it work for you? Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Great, thank you. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this VM Blog video from the iGel Disrupt 2020 event in Nashville. And if you did like it, please like the video below and also hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, we do a lot of events throughout the year covering IT, and uh, if you want to stay up to date with us, you know, and you're subscribed, you'll get notified when we post a new video. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or, and or vmblog.com, or, e or our events.vmblog.com page, which has all of our different events that we cover throughout the year.